so today we are going to cover uh, some topics which are related uh, I mean the questions which are related to uh, rudder actually and uh, uh, since as per requests I thought to cover uh, basically I started with covering with the types of rudder but since I thought let me finish off with the whole topic itself but uh, months back I have already covered the topic checks and inspection where even that clearances that is jumping clearance pintle bearing clearance all these things I have already covered in one of my video so that one I'll with the link of that will I be sharing here in the description so and rest of the questions which uh, yeah, often surveyor asks this will be covered in this video so we'll start with uh, basically we'll start with uh, giving a brief idea because coming directly to the topic doesn't serve or suit the purpose so we'll start with the rudder what is a rudder okay so uh, you all know that it's a device that is used for steering and maneuvering a vessel okay we all are familiar obviously this will not be asked by your surveyor rudders are hydrofoils which are pivoting on a vertical axis they are located normally at the stern behind propeller to produce a transverse force and steering moment about the ship center of gravity by deflecting the water flow to the direction of the foil plane. Now, the rudder effectiveness can be improved by rudder arrangement in the propeller stern, uh, stream, increasing the rudder area, better rudder type, that is, uh, we are going to see it in uh, henceforth that rudder um, that is paid rudder instead of semi balanced rudder high lift profiles or flap rudders next one would be steering gear which allows larger rudder angle than the customary 35 degree shorter rudder this also we are going to see basically why it's limited to 35 degree all these things will be covering shorter rudders steering time more powerful hydraulic pump in steering gear which type of rudder that would suit a particular ship now means what on factors that rudder design actually depends on that is a hull form speed propeller design the structural arrangement of the stern clearance between the propeller and the stern and also a few hydrodynamic factors that in dictate the flow of water aft of the propeller ship design stage we actually do not uh, decide the suitable rudder for the ship what uh, so what designers and naval architect do is estimate a very approximate dimension of the rudder along with the propeller because at design stage we just give a rough idea but as we enter the preliminary uh, design of the ship the rudder and the propeller dimensions are almost fixed giving us almost clear idea of the type of rudder that would best fit the design problem now, what are the challenges that we face in designing that rudder? One of the basic problem of uh, is deciding whether to optimize the rudder for the service speed or for low speed maneuvering. Because often now you see that we have a slow steaming that is going on. So this is a design problem because either the rudder can be designed for the service speed or for low speed maneuvering. Many rudder uh, configuration can meet guidelines for turning circles and zigzag but still not be optimum for the ship service profile for ships like vlccs and container vessel the majority of service is course keeping consequently rudder angles during normal course keeping and maneuvering operation are limited to 35 degree so bigger vessels they are more prone to keeping the same angle rather than turning it frequently so this is a design uh, problem that is coming for some service profile, good slow speed performance is very important and high rudder op operating angles will reach greater benefit. Now, the question this will is often asked by a surveyor that why rudder angle limited to 35 degree? Beyond 35 degree, rudder efficiency is reduced due to formation of eddies on the back of rudder as the flow is no longer streamlined this is called this is called stalled condition okay so this is a condition of stall 
the maneuverability does not increase beyond 35 degree but rudder torque increases and ship's turning circle increases so this increases which hinders so it is limited to 35 degree now same question that we are we, we do often a steering test but why steering test rudder angle 35 degree to 30 degree on one side 35 to the other side i mean starboard 35 and then we have port 30 degree so that the point at which it reaches can be exactly just as it crosses 30 degree as hunting gear puts pump stroke to zero the rudder movement slows down progressively as it approaches 35 degree now uh, we go and we uh, talk about the types of rudder so these are the two questions that will be asked that why rudder angle limited to 35 degrees why steering test rudder angle 35 degree to 30 degree now this is the another question that will this is out the types of rudder the types of rudder for ships spade balanced rudder we also say spade rudder or balanced rudder rudder with a part of the blade surface put forward of the axis so that water pressure on this portion counterbalances that on the other after part it is basically a rudder that is fixed to the rudder stock only at the top so when you see a rudder which is like hanging and from the top only it is fixed okay the rudder stock does not run along the span of the rudder means the rudder stock will not be running throughout the rudder throughout the span of the rudder it will only be fixed at the top the position of the rudder stock along the cord of the rudder now because uh, this will have cord so as on the cord cord length uh, uh, whatever be the cord length on the cord this will be present the stock width meaning uh, from forward to aft end of the rudder actually decides whether the rudder is balanced or semi balanced so if you look at the position of the stock okay that will decide whether the rudder is balanced or semi balanced in balanced rudder which paid rudders generally are the rudder stock is at such a position such that 40 percent of the rudder area is forward of the stock the so 40 percent area will be forward of the rudder stock forward of the rudder and the remaining is aft of it and remaining is aft of it a genuine question that must have come up in your mind is why is such a position chose for rudder stock the answer lies in the simple physics the center of gravity of the rudder will lie somewhere close to 40 percent of its cord length from its forward end if the axis of the rudder is placed near to the location the torque required to rotate the rudder will be much lesser than what is required to move it had the axis been placed at the forward end of the rudder so the energy requirement for the steering gear uh, equipment is reduced therefore lowering the fuel consumption of the ship so basically cord if the it is placed at the cord the stock is placed at the cord it is not running uniformly so it uh, saves the fuel consumption okay the torque required to rotate the uh, rudder that will be very, uh, pretty lesser so because of which energy requirement is less because of which the fuel consumption is less so such type of a rudder is known as what we call is the spade rudder or balanced rudder now when we talk about unbalanced rudder these rudders have the stock attached and the forward most point of their span that was only 40 percent at the cord length but these are stocks it is a forward most point unlike balanced rudder which is not like balanced rudder the rudder stock runs along the cord length of the rudder the reason is simple in this case the torque required to turn the rudder is way higher than what is required for a corresponding balanced rudder so here if, if a difference comes like tell us the difference between a balanced rudder and an unbalanced rudder so the first difference that will be that the rudder stock that is running throughout the span of the rudder whereas in balanced rudder it is not the, so the case the torque required here will be more in unbalanced rudder whereas compared to torque required in uh, balanced rudder will be little lesser so the fuel consumption energy requirement in balanced rudder will be lesser as compared to unbalanced rudder now 
the reason is uh, the torque required to the rudder is way higher than what is required in the corresponding parallel so the topmost part of the rudder has to be fixed to the spindle so as to prevent it from vertical displacement from its natural position however unbalanced rudders are not widely used now so um, these rudders are not widely used having dis uh, discussed the conventional type of rudder now shift are something yet more interesting way and then that is in in case there was a failure of the steering gear mechanism while turning a shift the rudder would remain still okay this this was a problem that if in case while turning the shift while this through the steering gear the rudder will be fixed at a point so what uh, the people have done come up with angle of attack okay the solution to this was found in designing an optimized semi balanced rudder which is so now what most of the ships have is something what is known as semi balanced rudder which is not basically balanced as well as unbalanced so whatever we discussed in balanced and unbalanced that throughout the stock length that is unbalanced in the forward most portion not at the chord length chord uh, sent not at the center of gravity uh, so this was the case now this is a unbalanced rudder you can see that rudder stock that is running throughout it is in the forward most portion now when we talk about semi balanced rudder <coughs> in uh, so the most of the ship today is they are coming with this semi balanced rudder now this name semi that is uh, that directly implies that the rudder will be partially balanced and partially unbalanced so now i'll show you the figure where you will find that uh, from the top that the portion of the cord length from the top is unbalanced and the remaining cord length is balanced the top part being unbalanced will help in acting as structural support so it will help in you know, structural support of the rudder from the vertical displacement so there will not be any vertical displacement and the balanced part will render less torque in swinging the rudder so the lower part will help in swinging the rudder as a result the semi balanced rudder returns to the center line orientation on its own if the steering gear equipment fails during the turn now if a steering gear equipment fails during a turn the rudder will return on its own position this is the case of semi balanced rudder which was not the case with unbalanced rudder or balanced rudder so this is the difference so it is partly balanced partly unbalanced and it will return to its original position if steering mechanism fails okay so uh, so this is the diagram that the upper part is what is uh, we have discussed is of unbalanced type and the lower part is balanced type okay semi balanced rudder now can be again they have classified into two types shallow horn rudder uh, will have a horn which extends hardly half the cord length of the rudder from the top half the cord length this horn will extend from partly from the top okay now when we talk about deep horn rudder will feature a horn deeply extending up to more than 50% of its cord length from the top of the rudder means deep horn okay to so shallow horn and deep horn next type we have flap rudder okay so in flap rudder uh, we have we change the effective angle of attack okay now this angle of attack i cannot make you visualize here what is important in maneuverability uh, entire uh, entire aerofoil section of this wing see during a takeoff how all the flaps are completely deployed so you can imagine have, uh, when you on board on uh, when you are on a plane you see the wings so during a takeoff how the flaps are there and during landing how the flaps are there and after taking off reaching the maximum height how it is so this change helps in attaining the effective angle of attack so as to get the maximum lift force the same principle when used in rudders provide a similar result just that in case of rudder the flaps are not retractable 
and they have their significant effects when the rudder is given some angle of attack okay so this is what is uh, about the uh, flap rudder okay so we have a flap and the other portion that is rudder so flap changes the flap changes the angle of attack because of which there is better maneuverability as compared you can also visualize visualize it okay now next type uh, <coughs> is a plaker rudder okay this is one of the most i would say innovate innovative thing uh, okay now when we have ships which are of higher uh, sizes okay which are which cannot be um, uh, maneuver from a rudder of such type uh, so a plaker rudder has a smaller auxiliary propeller housed within it so we have a smaller auxiliary propeller housed within it which runs by a motor okay so it is not a separate steering gear system we have a motor and auxiliary auxiliary propeller which is inside it as this housing is mounted on the rudder itself it generates a thrust what the, it does it generates thrust which is smaller than what is generated by the ship's main engine propeller in a direction that is oriented along the rudder therefore allowing effective maneuver in slow speed condition so you can in a nutshell you can say that propeller and the rudder they are fixed and that propeller is driven by a separate motor because of which little lesser torque is generated not as compared to the balanced or semi balanced rudder such a rudder can be used in normal condition also just that in normal speeds the plaker is not operated however when plaker is run the main engine propeller must not be operated simultaneously which will otherwise cause the plaker to be torn away okay we cannot tv because it is connected with main engine also so you cannot be operating with it togetherly the same way so this is the thing that we were talking about and you can see the uh, propeller uh, blades as well as a motor and the it is how it is connect to the rudder portion now next very important azimuth thruster now you must be wondering that we were talking about uh, uh, this i have taken from kongsberg marine because most of the systems in offshore supply platform offshore uh, vessel the platform supply vessels you will find this kongsberg system wherein such azimuth propeller or azimuth thrusters are placed so uh, basically it is a combination of Uh, the both because there are uh, propeller blades that are placed inside a pot okay now this rotates around 360 degree in azimuth thrusters the propeller rotates 360 degree around the vertical axis so the unit provides propulsion so we don't have a requirement of a separate rudder because it rotates 360 degree that will only act as a rudder so it is it helps in a maneuverability as well as in steering design have been developed for propulsion and dynamic positioning in response to market requirement as a result there is a design available to suit particularly simple and robust construction provides high operational reliability together with simple maintenance for low through life cost unit can be supplied for diesel or electric drive together with a remote control system this is the system that we are talking about people sailing in offshore industry or in just you can see one face is forward one face is one face is aft one face is forward this is completely it has rotated around its vertical axis to 360 degree okay so this helps in uh, propulsion as well as in steering so we don't have a requirement of all together a separate what we call is a rudder the propeller itself in pod acts as a rudder now this is something which is uh, very innovative new less uh, in uh, industry it consists of number of hydrofoil blades mounted in a disc which is in turn mounted on to the hull the disc rotates in a horizontal plane about a horizontal axis and therefore imparts a rotation into the blades the blades themselves can be adjusted to have a varying angle of attack during the operation of the propeller depending on that the direction and the magnitude of thrust are varied well if we are manipulating the direction of the thrust too then we don't actually need a rudder 
what is actually why a white propeller act as a combined propulsion and steering system of the ship okay so when we talk about it so it is very innovative we have blades and it's all together separate system it is very least common now in shipping industry so what all we uh, discussed uh, today was that ki what is a rudder what are the constraints how we choose a rudder for a particular ship to the design requirement why the rudder angle is limited to 35 degree and uh, why it is when steering test we do only till 35 to 30 degree on other side then we talked about uh, the types of uh, rudder that was uh, balanced rudder uh, unbalanced rudder and then we talked about semi balanced rudder then we talked about flap then we talked about uh, plaker then we talked about azimuth propellers or thrusters then we talk about the latest the avoid propulsion okay so these were all a part of uh, discussion and uh, so th uh, what is important in this lesson was the types of rudder Uh, and more focus on uh, you put your more emphasis and focus on the balanced rudder and unbalanced rudder and azimuth uh, propeller and why steering test is done at uh, 35 degree to 30 degree and why rudder angle is limited to 35 degree so these are here three important questions that has to be kept in mind so i also have covered Uh, the checks on rudder what all checks are done in dry dock specially okay by the surveyor so these uh, i have already mentioned and the uh, checks and inspection okay uh, in my previous video and which i'll place it in uh, give you the link in the description the second thing what i also covered in the last video was jumping clearance pintle bearing clearance all these things so with this we cover the whole aspect of uh, rudder all about rudder uh, which covers almost uh, whatever the surveyor is asking from the topic rudder thank you all thank you so much please uh, share us your valuable feedback so that we can improve